Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're doing good today. Well, today I'm going to try to answer the question of how long does garden sulfur keep your pH low in your garden? And uh, guys, this came from a comment. A, a, a gentleman asked me this and I really didn't know the answer to it. So I figured out a way I could check it. So what I did was I took a soil test today and I have a video um, that came from almost exactly a year ago. And where I'm standing is where my potatoes were last year. So I have the results from a year ago. And so I'm going to leave the description to that, or leave a link to that video in the description. And you can see the results in it. And there's some pretty good information in there about kind of how garden sulfur works and, and maybe why you would want to lower it. But for the purpose of today's video, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I got my pH down from probably a 7 or a little bit higher down to a 6. So I'm going to show you the results here in just a minute of what they were today. But guys, I did some reading. I just didn't want to do that and try and make a video out of it. I wanted to give you guys some facts, you know, and things like that. And so I read some uh, studies from different universities all across the country and I got some really uh, they were all different they were different it was kind of frustrating because I couldn't get a straight answer you know and so I the more I read the more it made sense and so uh, you know I'm going to share these variables with you they're, they're going to affect how long this garden sulfur works so the first one it really is your soil type um, I have clay soil and it tends to run alkaline. Usually I've taken dozens of pH tests out here and if I check a spot that I have not amended, it's going to be neutral to slightly alkaline. Now, uh, from what I understand, and I've said this in other videos, sandy soil tends to run a little bit acidic. Now, if somebody would please leave a comment and kind of let me know if that's a true statement. I've, I've always read it, but I don't want to say the wrong thing. So if somebody, you know, let me know if I'm saying, you know, right by, by doing that. Um, so really what it is, is like in my clay soil, it, I'm always going to have that extra fight, you know, to get it, you know, lower down uh, that maybe somebody in sandy soil wouldn't so therefore common sense tells me that it's just not going to last as long because you know it's got a, a tougher fight to stay lower another variable that you have and this one really got me because there were so many different things um and that is your climate now this kind of goes off topic just a little bit but it raises another question that I don't know if I can answer or not. You know, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, but it has to do with breaking down of, you know, your garden sulfur. Now, here's what I used. And all this is is just, uh, it's a pelletized sulfur. Now, this actually does nothing for your soil. So let me explain this. When you put this in your garden, it has to be broke down. It has to turn into a sulfate or a sulfuric acid, however you want to say it. And then your plants can use it. So it takes a certain amount of time. And this is where things kind of went haywire. Because, like I say, I, I, I read these studies from all over the country. And they were all different on how long it took to break it down. But it makes sense. Because how it gets broke down is by microbes in your soil. So if I'm reading a study from, say, Georgia or Florida, um, longer growing season, warmer weather, and, and these microbes are just going to be working more, um, so this garden sulfur is going to get broke down faster. So when you read a, uh, a study that says, yeah, you can put it on in, in January and you can plant in May, you know, to me that it was a little bit crazy. Again, if you're in Wisconsin shorter growing season the microbes aren't working as much some of them said put it on in the spring and don't plant anything until the following spring now most of them did say put it on in the fall 
and then you can plant in the spring. And everything that I've done, you know, all my tests and all the videos that I've done, I've always put it on in the fall. And, you know, I've checked it about this time of year and it's always worked pretty decent. So, you know, that part kind of made sense. Now, here's another variable. Um, the amount of organic matter that you have in your soil. Because the more organic matter you have, the more microbes you're going to have. So uh, there's two things here that I believe, I don't think there's any dispute over this. One of them is, doesn't matter if you're putting an amendment like a garden sulfur, you know, aluminum sulfate, whatever it is, eventually you are going to have to reapply it. Okay, I don't think anybody will argue that. Another one is, organic matter will solve any of your soil's problems. You know, when you put it on enough and long enough, it's going to solve just about anything that is wrong with your soil. So this is the question that started running through my mind is, is okay, um, just like the guy that left the comment, he left another great comment, and I want to share it. Uh, he said he was a, a full-time mulcher, and a part-time gardener and he has shared in the comments on some of the videos about what he is doing you know to, to get this organic matter into his garden and it's just amazing and so i would have to think that his microbes and his soil are through the roof because of all that organic matter so the question is when that when those microbes break down that garden sulfur do they continue to keep working it and does it make basically the lifespan of it shorter now guys i don't know that um but i definitely think that the more organic matter you have the more microbes you're going to have so that's kind of something that i view as a variable to how long you know your ph will stay low now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to show you the results of this test that I took today. And guys, if you like stuff like this, I, I try to keep it interesting. I do a lot of, you know, testing and things like that. And I really want gardening to be fun. So if you enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing. I appreciate it. So let me show you what I got. Now this, like I say, it came from today. And so, guys, that's a seven. That's, I mean, to me, that's a seven all day long. And I know <clears throat> these at-home test kits aren't the most accurate, but for what I do, I really do like them. And I think this is more than accurate enough to show that over a year's time, my pH went up back to a 7. And this is pretty much what it is throughout my garden. And so, guys, um, the original question was, how long does it last? Well, it doesn't last a year. Now, what I can do is, is I can go over to where my potatoes are this year and this fall take a test, and I can narrow it down even more. But the, the, the answer to the question, as I see it, and nobody's probably going to like this, is um, it's going to vary person to person, state to state, you know, just there is no one set answer to that question. And you're just going to have to test your soil before you put anything into it. And I know that it's kind of a cop out a little bit, but I think that's an honest answer, you know, and so for that reason, I'm just going to have to say you're just going to have to test your soil. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it, it you know, it helped. And, and you know, uh, thanks for watching and I appreciate it. I'll see you next time. See ya. Bye.